Hello everyone. In this video, we will be looking at movement along grid. Now I have taken a question here. The question says that an ant who wants to travel to the sugar particle using the shortest path along the grid. Now the keyword here is shortest path. In how many ways can it select its path? So let me take a smaller example, a parallel scenario to make you understand how movement along grid works and what do we mean by shortest path. Now here I have taken a smaller example. Let this point be point A and this be point B. Now A P, let's see a person whose name is Amit is standing and he wants to travel to point B. How can he travel? Now he can travel towards the left direction. He can also walk towards the right direction. He can go below, he can go above, anything, right? He can do anything. But the questions that we will be getting about the movement along grid will always be shortest path questions. Because again, this term, the shortest path term is not mentioned in the question. You need to understand that the number of ways in which Amit can go from point A to point B is infinity. He can go to point C, then D, then F, then again do the same rotation, then again do the same rotation, then let's say he comes to point um, E, then again do the same rotation and he can do a million rotations before coming to point B. But that is not the shortest path. The shortest path is when Amit travels in the south first direction and in the west direction considering this to be north. So only and only if Amit travels towards south and west, the path that he will be selecting is the shortest one. Let us assume these points as C, D and F. Now to reach to B, he can either travel from A to C to D or A to F to D. And then so he can travel like this. Let me take a different color. He can travel like this. A possibility here. He can travel like this. He can travel like this. He can travel like this, upar se sakta hai. he can do anything he wants, right? But the only thing he needs to keep in mind is he either needs to travel left or down. Nothing else apart from these two steps. So if Amit takes left and down steps, he will be reaching destination B with the shortest path or along the shortest path. Now there can be more than one shortest path, right? Which I mentioned here, there can be more than one shortest path. He can travel to D, he can travel to E and then travel to B or, or anything else apart from that. Now how to calculate how many shortest paths are there? For that, we need to go about any question in a few number of steps. Step one is first of all determine the directions in which we can travel. Here it is left and down. So that should always be our step one. Step two is understanding how many steps to be taken on each direction. So for example, in this grid, we see that Amit needs to take one step, two step, three step and four step down. So he needs to take four steps in the downward direction. And how many left? This one this one and this one. So three steps in the left direction or the west direction. So this is step two. Then step three is simply arranging the steps. So basically 
we have to arrange the three left and the four steps taken in the downward direction. Now, how to arrange these? I can say that a left step can be written in L and a downward step can be denoted as D. So I have three L's and four D's. How to arrange three L's and four D's? The total number of arrangements would be equal to seven factorial divided by three factorial into four factorial. We already know how to arrange letters, right? Considering the steps to be singular letters, we can apply the same theory and calculate the number of shortest paths available along the grid with the constraints in movement given in the question. If you follow these three steps in movement along grid questions, the chances of errors reduce significantly. Now, let us move on to the first question that we have taken and solve it out using the same three steps we have discussed over here. Now, for this question, ant and sugar particle, the ant wants to travel to the sugar particle. Remember that one block always corresponds to one step. So, for the ant to reach to the sugar particle, how many shortest paths are there? Let's go with this method. Step 1. Step 1 is to determine the directions in which we can travel. So the ant can travel in the downward direction and the leftward direction. So left and down. Step 2. Step 2 is to determine how many steps does the ant need to take in each of these directions. So for the ant to reach on the sugar particle, he needs to take one, two, three, four, and five steps in the downward direction and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight steps in the leftward direction. So the leftward steps can be written as L. So I have eight L's. And the downward directions can be denoted as D. So I have five D's. What is my step three? My step three is arranging these steps. How many total steps we have? We have a total of 13 steps. So I need to arrange these 13 steps because any arrangement would give me the shortest path. He can take a left, then a down. He can take two lefts and then a down. He can take a down and left. Any arrangement of these 13 letters, right? How many ways we can arrange these 13 letters? 13 factorial divided by 5 factorial into 8 factorial. You will solve this out and we can get to the answer. So all these movement along grid questions can be very easily solved with this three-step approach method. There is also another method which is used to solve complex questions, but that would be taught to you in the upcoming classes. That will be all about this video. You can log on to the website and see all the other basic videos on permutation and combination.